And welcome once again to Rhema Praise. We are so glad that you have tuned in today. You know, honey, today you're going to be talking about decisions. Yep. Decision that, determines your destiny. That's right. And you know, every day we make decisions. That's right. And it's so important that, that we think about it. We not only make one or two decisions, we make several decisions, sometimes a hundred decisions. <laughs> That's in the right. Day. But you know, decisions you make in life is, is what determines your destiny. That's right. Yeah. You know, um, honey, I, making decisions also can, can cause you to be tired. And I read this, I read this article, this is something funny. Well, it's not really too funny, but it is funny. <laughs> uh, I read this article about decision fatigue. Yeah. Okay. So I wanted to know the solution to decision fatigue. So I read the article and guess what's one of the things that helps you in what? decision fatigue? Um, some kind of nuts and some kind of chocolate. <laughs> and so on my desk, are M peanut M and M and M's, and I was wondering why I was grabbing them so much. <laughs> I think it's because I had decision fatigue. <laughs> hey, uh, you don't want to make a decision without, uh, you know, praying and asking God yes. about certain things, because He said in His Word that if you needed wisdom, mm -hmm. to ask Him and He would give you that. But you know, many people make, uh, even in the Bible, they made wrong yes. decisions. Samson made a wrong decision. Jonah made mm -hmm. a wrong decision. But then there are those that made good decisions, mm -hmm. like, like uh, you know, like uh, Paul made good decisions. Paul made a good yes. decision. You know, many of people made good decisions. But you have to say, okay, God, this is where I'm at. Now help me, help me out. Now some people say. Well, that, that seems so simplistic. But listen, when you pray to God and talk to God, you need to talk to Him just like yes. you would talk to your earthly father. I mean, if I needed help with, with something, I would just go in and say, Hey, Dad, what about this? You, you got any ideas? Mm -hmm. That's the way we talk. But some people think you have to have this professional voice and you got to go into all this stuff. No, just start talking and say, Oh, yes. hey, God, I need, I need help. Yes. Okay, why don't we go before I get into too much of the sermon? Yes. Where I'm preaching on decision determines your destiny. You no. Know, we make decisions every day. You make probably probably a hundred or more decisions are made every day. Stop and think about it for a minute. Think about how many decisions you make every day. You don't even pay attention to them. You just make the decision and go on. Hello? If you're approaching an intersection, you've got to make it, and, and, the, 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 and you're, you're too close to the intersection, you've got to make a decision whether to slide halfway out in the middle of the intersection or to try to get through it, right? Because if you're at that point of, that it's, uh, it's, got not, it's not going to be good to stop. It's not going to be good to do, go through it. But you can't be indecisive. You got to do something. How many of you get up every morning and you, uh, you know, some people don't have to decide what to wear to work because they have a uniform. But some people have to decide what, what they're going to wear to work. Yeah. You have to, you know. There's a decision made, you know, oh, hey, what are we going to eat for lunch today? Probably some of you have already said that to, one, to your husband or wife or the kids or one of your friends. How many of you have already said something to somebody and said, what are we going to eat for lunch? I know my grandsons have. They are, those boys, you can't fill them up. I tell you. <laughs> Especially Cameron. But, you know, sitting here today... There are many, many people, not just, not just the people that have come for our college weekend, but there are many people right here in our own congregation that you are in a valley of decision. 
How many of you raise your hand and say, yes, I'm in valley of decision. There's things I need to make decisions on. We're all there. You know, in the Bible, there's a, there's a, a lot of people that made decisions all the time. All you got to do is just go read about them. You know, and some of them made some pretty bad decisions. You know that? We had uh, Adam made a bad decision when he took and ate the apple or whatever kind of fruit it was, and it affected the whole human race. Now, somebody said, well, that wasn't a decision. Yes, that was his decision. The Bible says that Eve was deceived, but Adam willingly did it. He made a decision to take and eat of it. Hello? Come on. Don't sit there like that. Samson decided that he would have one night of pleasure. It wouldn't hurt, but he suffered for the rest of his life. David decided he wanted Bathsheba and decided to have her husband killed, and it cost him greatly. Judas decided to, de to de betray Jesus and he died unrepentive death. You know, that's just, you could go find a whole lot more people. Jonah made a bad decision. But then he straightened it out. There are some decisions that you make, can you can straighten out. There are some decisions that are made that there's no straightening out. You know, people in, in the Bible who made proper godly decisions... Abraham, when God called him to leave his country, he said, okay, I'll make a decision to go. He left everything that he had and he went out and they asked him, hey, Abraham, where are you going? I don't know. I'm looking for a city. He didn't even know where he was going. God just said, go. You know, sometimes you, you got to just believe God and go. Don't look at me like that. It's the truth. I've been there, done that. Didn't know what the next step was. All I knew was God said go, so I got up and started. You'll never, like the Apostle Paul on the road to Damascus, God talked to him and he was saved there. But he, he told him, he said, you go in the city and then it'll be told you what to do. You know, God could have told him right there. But if Paul hadn't went into the city, it he'd, have never, he'd have never done what he did because it was there where he got his information that he needed. David made the decision to fight Goliath when his brothers were making fun of him and everybody else was saying, well, you're just a little bitty scrawny 17-year-old kid. Get on back out there with them sheep because that's where he'd come from. But David made the decision and that decision, man, made him in good stead. He, it, it, changed his life, changed the direction of his life. Daniel decided to keep praying when they told him not to. He ended up in the lion's den, but he came through the lion's den and ended up being the, the number one counselor to the king. Peter made a decision to leave his vocation and go follow Jesus. Like I said, Paul had to, he made a decision to decide and he decided to turn his back on. He was a <coughs> religious fanatic. He was, he was an individual that was of, of note and renown among his people. And he turned his back on all of that and became a minister to the Gentiles. Uh, throughout history, people have made decisions and those decisions have affected the rest of their life and ultimately their place in eternity. Many of the old Pentecostal pioneers had to make a decision to serve God in the fullness of the Spirit in the midst of great persecution. I know I've heard my dad, I heard my dad talk about some of those early days, and I remember some of them. Uh, you know, people would throw stuff at the church and the parsonage, and I experienced some of it in in my early days in school. And back in you know when I first started school, I heard 1945, 46. 
nobody, nobody, you didn't let anybody know you was the Pentecostal preacher's son. If you did, nobody would sit, sit with you at lunch. Nobody would talk to you. You were an outcast. You were despised. You know, but you either make a decision to serve God or not to serve God. You know, and as you sit here today, you are not alone in the long line of people that have entered the valley of decision concerning their life with God and things that God is speaking to them about doing. The power of decision is vitally important. And let me give you a little story. In 1882, D.L. Moody. Now, how many of you know who D.L. Moody was? How many of you don't? A few of you. D.L. Moody, go, go Google it and you can find it out. But D.L. Moody was a great evangelist, a great evangelist that traveled all over, coming out of Chicago. Well, he did a whirlwind preaching tour through England one evening. He preached from Genesis 3, 9. Then the Lord God called to Adam and said to him, where are you? In the audience was that night said a 14-year-old boy named Tommy Buse. He was, he, 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 he was riveted with his attention on Moody as he preached. Three days later, Tommy wrote his sister, I'm writing to tell you some good news, which you'll be glad to hear. I went to Moody's meeting on Tuesday, and there I was saved. Tommy's life was permanently changed, and he later became a prominent, a prominent evangelical preacher. Several years later, his son uh, Cecil spent 20 years in a missionary service in Kenya before returning to head up England's largest missionary society. Cecil had four children. One became a missionary surgeon in Africa. Another became a Christian business, a businessman in London. A daughter became the wife of an evangelical Christian, uh, clergyman. A fourth, Richard, became an associate pastor of the All Souls Church in London. Altogether, 100 children, grandchildren, and great-grandchildren flowed from the, the life of Tommy Buse. Almost all of them in some aspect of Christian service, all because of the decision that one man made when he heard the gospel preached. Only eternity will show the effect of the decisions that you make today. What are some of the essentials in making a decision? Well, as you're thinking about your decisions, whatever it may be, to come and go to Raymond Bible College, to invest in a business venture, to do this or whatever, to buy property, to whatever it is your decision is. Let's go read Psalms 1, one through 3. Psalms 1, 1 through 3. Blessed is the man who does not... I'm reading from the New International Version. Blessed is the man who does not walk in the counsel of the wicked or stand in the way of sinners or sit in the seat of mockers. But his delight is in the law of the Lord, and on that law he meditates day and night. He is like a tree planted by the streams of water which yields its fruits in season and whose leaf does not wither. Whatever he does prospers. Now, as you look at this it begins to give you ingredients to help you make a godly decision. First of all, choose godly people who can direct you in the right way. See, blessed is the man who does not walk in the counsel of the wicked. Then, you know, ask believers who have a heart for the things of God. Sometimes you ask people that have been in, 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 uh, involved in whatever you're deciding to do yourself. You know, uh, ask people who are not stumbling blocks by their example and lifestyle. 
ask people who are not mockers of the things of God, you know, ask the people who seek God. Now, a lot of people, they, what is a mocker? What is somebody that just pokes fun? Oh, you can't play that. Now, wait a minute. You got a, you got a natural mind. Use it. Don't. Now, what's all this business? I, you got you to gotta get some of these things out of the way. Now, it's, it's, it, it's nothing wrong with getting good counsel, but make sure you're getting it from the right kind of people. That's the problem. That's the problem. Several years ago, one of our board of director, board of, uh, of advisors and directors for this ministry, one of our board members, he said that although whatever, he, he would look at what the economics said on buying property and, and investing and so forth and so on, because he was a, he, he, he was one of these guys that he he was um, um, <laughs> he built well in fact he built in our city he built uh, all kinds of stuff a developer thank you that's the word I was hunting for and he said I would look at all of the natural things but I would never move until I got the answer from God. And God so blessed him. And if you know anything about finances, that you'll, you'll know when, when I say this. God so blessed him that he could go to the bank and get a $10 million signature loan. That means only signature, no collateral, anything. That's pretty stout. How many of you know about finances? No, that's, that's stout. But he said, I look at all of this from the natural standpoint, but I never move until I hear from God. In fact, that's the way he, he was working at a bank, just as an individual in the bank, and that's the way he got his first piece of property. He, he, the Lord told him he had been looking at this piece of property, and he, had, and he actually had bought it. And... Uh, and he had tried to, he thought it'd be a good place for a service station or gas, back in those days, you know, you, they, you didn't pump your own gas. And uh, so he, he had went to several of the companies trying to sell it and nobody was interested. And he was shaving one, one morning and the Lord said, go back to, the, and he named the, the oil company. He said, they're ready to buy and he said, Lord, I was just there yesterday. He, and, uh, and he said, besides that, now all the economic deals say that it, it's going a different direction. And, uh, you know, I, I made a bad decision. The Lord said, go do it. So he went there and they said, man, we were just looking for your number. We want to buy a lot. He said, they're fixing to build a freeway and they're going to make a major uh, interchange right here and we want to put a service station right there he sold the one lot for enough to pay for the whole piece of property and everything else he made off of it was all gravy and that started me, to him into developer business and that's when he said I look at all this stuff here but I never make the decision until I hear from God hello keep the word of God in front of you When, when I get ready to make a decision, I read the Word. You'd be surprised how many times when you start, just pick up the Bible and start reading, you know, no, no, no uh, plan deal. Just pick up, open it up and start reading. And, and I'm not talking about opening it and pointing your finger. No, I'm just talking about opening it up, just start reading. And after a few days, if you stop and think, everything you've been reading is will help with the decision you're supposed to make. Making the right decision launches you into the plans that God has for your, for your life. So let's go through some things here. Decide to pay the price, whatever it takes, to do what you know that God needs you to do. In living for God and other things. You got to make a de you may have to make a decision. See, now let's get over here on the other side. You may have to make a decision if you're gonna live for God to walk away from some of your friends. Because they're pulling you the other direction. 
decide to take the step. Remember, Paul went into the city and he was told him what to do. My dad used to tell me, he'd say, son, he'd say, I'd say, well, the Lord hasn't said anything. Then he said, I go as much as by what the Lord doesn't say is what he says. If he hadn't said anything, then I keep going. If he don't want me going that way, he'll tell me. Decide to let go of things that hinder you from obeying what God wants you to do. You may, have to, you may have to let some stuff go. Decide to press in on, in the things, uh, press into the things of God and then the power of God will be released to you. Decide to speak the word of God every day over your life. This is the day the Lord has made. I will rejoice and be glad in it. I can do all things through Christ which strengthens me today. Everything that comes my way, I can conquer because no weapon formed against me shall prosper. See, make those decisions. Let that word come out of you every morning. And if you do, then you're setting yourself up to make the right decisions every time a decision comes along. Hello? Making the right decision is the final step in fulfilling your destiny. David decided to fight, the Goli fight Goliath. He became the king. Moses decided to confront Pharaoh and he delivered the children of Israel. David decided to do what was right and prayed three times a day. He went in the lion's den, but he came out and became the ki king's number one counselor. Gideon decided to believe God and won a great victory. Mary decided to obey and she had Jesus. Peter decided to repent after he had no, denied the Lord for three times and became one of the great leaders of the early church. Paul decided to leave comfort and acceptance to become the greatest missionary that the world has ever seen. Decisions, decisions, decisions. Your destiny lies in your decision. As you walk with me, says the Lord, I will lead, I will guide, and I will direct. But I can't make you do anything. But you have to decide what you're going to do. I will lead you. I will guard you. I guide you. I will show you which way to go. But unless you decide to do it, then you're on your own. And you must decide to, in your heart every day what you are going to do in respect to following me with your life, with your ministry, with everything that you do. And as you make the decisions, I will release my power. I will remove the obstacles and you'll come through with flying colors. And then you can shout and have the victory. Oh, I did not tell you it would be easy, but I, I am telling you that when you make the right decision, I will be there with you. I will be there for you and it will be fine. Hallelujah to Jesus. Now, if somebody don't know what that is, that's just uh, the word of the Lord began to come to my heart. And I just spoke out, out of my spirit what the word of the Lord began to say. And that's a good place. I'm, I'm not quite finished, but that's a good place to close, I think. Hallelujah. I trust you got a hold of what I was talking about there and grabbed a hold of those points and, be, and put them in, to work in, in your life. You know, honey, I was thinking, I, and maybe this will help the, uh, all of you out there listening. Every day as I am praying, doing my devotions in the yeah. morning, uh, you know, I don't know what kind of decisions I'm going to have to make right. every day. So every day I just appropriate, I said, Father, over in James, you said, if any man lack wisdom, yeah, man. let him ask and you would give it to him, me, him liberally. And so every day I do that. I say, God, I don't know what kind of decisions that I'm going to have to make today, but I thank you, Father, that you do give me wisdom, that you will tell me the decision that I need to make right. so that I will make the proper decision. I'm always praying, Lord, give me, give me wisdom and knowledge. Lord, I thank yes. you for wisdom and knowledge as 
we go through. But you know, our, our, our offer, and this is the last offer for the for the month. Yes. Last week, the God kind of faith by my dad, mm-hmm. a CD, and listen to your heart. Uh, a, in how, hearing God in a noisy world, this is a great great book. It's got. Uh, chapters, and then it's got questions at the end. It's great for for uh, personal study. It's great for family devotions. It's great for group small studies, groups, small group, and group studies. studies, and so forth and so on. It's all fifteen ninety five. Uh, the announcer will tell you how to get it there, and you want to get a hold of this because it, it's there. This is the last week that you can uh, that you that we're going to offer this. All right. That's right. Well, camp meeting's going to be coming up. Yes. Real soon. July twentieth through the twenty fifth. That's right. And today, well, this Sunday. Yeah. Is rockets over Raymond. This Sunday, rockets over Raymond. Yes. And so, hey. It, it, if you if you can get on out here yes, and be with us, all right. right. That's right. Well, don't forget Rama Bible Church here in Broken Era, ten twenty five West Kenosha. We meet every Sunday morning, ten a.m. and seven p.m. and Wednesday night, seven p.m. And, and it's live stream. You can go to Rama right. TV and and get it uh, every Sunday morning. Also, we're in Oklahoma City. It's a live service. A Sunday evening at 6 p.m., 8921 Northwest Expressway, Oklahoma City. Come and experience Sunday morning on Sunday night. Enjoy your weekend and come on Sunday night and enjoy Sunday morning. That's well, right. it's time for us to get out of here. And I want to say thank you for helping us to bring hope, hope help, help, and, and healing, healing to, to the, the world. world. Therefore, I say unto you, what things soever ye desire, When ye pray, believe that ye receive them, and ye shall have them. Have faith in God. Or have the God kind of faith. The God Kind of Faith, a classic CD sermon by Kenneth E. Hagin, explains that the same faith God used to speak the world into existence and the same faith Jesus used to command the fig tree to wither is the same faith in you today. Listen to your heart, hearing God in a noisy world, a powerful book by Kenneth W. Hagin with chapters like What is the Heart? Dividing the Soul and Spirit, Training Your Human Spirit, and much more. Both the book and the audio CD can be yours for only $15.95 by calling today, toll free, 888-PRAISE-8, or just log on to rhema.org day or night. Thank you for watching Rama Praise with Ken and Lynette Hagen. Ken, Lynette, and Rama Bible Training College are committed to reaching the entire world with the gospel of Jesus Christ and training laborers for the end time harvest. If you have prayer requests or would like more information, please write, call, or visit our website. Thank you for being with us today and for your faithful support. And remember, there is hope, help, and healing for a hurting world.